911. What is the location of your emergency? It's Monday, February 24th. There's a crisis at the home of Sarah Boone prompting her to call 911. Is this a police or medical? My boyfriend is dead. Okay, send the line for the fire department. Do not hang up. The fire department takes over the call. And for the next few minutes, officials are obtaining critical details about what happened. Now tell me exactly what happened there. Uh, my boyfriend and I were playing last night, and mm -hmm. I put him in a case when we were playing. And okay. Like kind of hide and seek kind of thing. So I fell asleep, and I woke up, and he was dead in the suitcase. So I don't know what happened. Okay, you hanging from somewhere or what, ma'am? No, I pulled him out of the suitcase. I tried oh, giving him CPR. Fire and Rescue instruct Boone on how to give chest compressions. Just keep on pumping. That's all you need to do for me. Keep on pumping his chest for me. That's, I don't need you to stop and talk or anything. I just want you to count out loud for me, okay? 31. 32. Please hurry. Okay, man, they're getting there as fast as they can, okay? He's deaf and he's purple. EMS arrived within minutes and advised Boone that her boyfriend, Jorge Torres, had been down too long and there was nothing more they could do. Boone explained she and Torres were drinking the night before and thought it would be funny if he got inside of a suitcase for a game of hide and seek. The next day, deputies returned and arrested Boone and charged her with second degree murder in Torres's death. Boone's story about a childhood game gone awry unraveled when investigators say they found video on her cell phone showing Boone taunting and laughing at Torres while he was struggling to get out of the suitcase. Police say he was yelling he couldn't breathe and asking Boone for help. According to police, Boone was captured on video saying, that's what I feel like when you cheat on me. When confronted with the video, officers say she told them she didn't remember those moments. But to investigators, those moments add up to motive for second degree murder. It's really a, a bizarre case, a lot of strange circumstances, but it, it's, it's for real, and that video does exist. We're going to take a look at it in just a moment. But let's bring in our, our special guest uh, joining us to talk about the case, Mark Iglarsh, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, and you can check out Mark and his law firm at speaktomark.com. And that's Mark with a K. All right, Mark, um, there's a lot of bizarre parts of this. Let's, let's watch the video together. We're going to show a, a piece of that video just to give folks an idea of what investigators looked at before they came to these charges. And then let's talk some more about it. Let's take a look. Sarah. It's my name. Don't wear it up. Sarah, I can't breathe, babe. Sarah, is he? Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. Sarah. All right, and, and the video goes on much longer. We're just going to show a, a piece of it here, but that's what you, what you do when you choke me when he's talking about he can't breathe, and then later on she talks about that's what happens when you cheat on me. Um, first of all, your reaction to this entire situation where he's in a suitcase, she's recording, and they're having this conversation. I'm going to be completely honest with you and say something I've never said in hundreds of TV appearances. I swear to you, I hoped you canceled me so I wouldn't have to relive what that guy went through in a suitcase. I thought I had covered all the worst ways to die. Well, I can't imagine what these jurors are going to think of that woman who did not assist him in getting out of that suitcase when he said he couldn't breathe. This is hard to watch. So I want to go to get in the suitcase, though. I mean, I don't think... She forces him in there. I mean, it, she doesn't. He's got to she voluntarily. Doesn't. So how does that how does that impact charges, mental state, culpability? If he voluntarily gets into that suitcase and she I guess she's got to zip it because you got to zip it from the outside. That's why she's only charged with second degree as opposed to first degree murder. What they have to show here in Florida is that she had a depraved. Heart. So it wasn't intentional, but it was reckless. It was, it, was, it was a reckless disregard of human life or property. In other words, she didn't know for sure he was going to die, but she didn't really care is what they're going to argue. Now, I listened to her voice. In her statement, she said they had been drinking. I mean, she yes. sounds absolutely like she'd been drinking, but I don't know what the toxicology sure. said. Um, does that at all 
become an issue for either side? Does it, does it help prosecutors? Does it help the defense? Does it tell this jury anything if, in fact, she's under the influence at the time all this is happening? I think it helps the defense. It helped me as I'm analyzing the case, thinking that she's not a complete monster, that at least the alcohol helped explain, at least mitigate why she would ignore his passionate cries that he couldn't breathe. And also what might explain why she ultimately fell asleep and didn't rectify this. Now that doesn't negate her guilt. It certainly mitigates it. And ultimately I think that and other factors may lead to the state reducing the charge even further, maybe to manslaughter and giving her some extraordinary outcome, which includes prison time, but nothing like the life that she's facing. So uh, you're looking at this, and, and from your experience, you think this is one where prior to going to trial, that this yes. is one that, hey, there's going to be some offers because this is such a unique set of circumstances and state of mind issues that this might be a, a negotiated plea here. Absolutely. In other words, if I'm representing her, what I do is I put together a mitigation package and I make it very clear that there were circumstances that evidenced negligent behavior, like culpable negligence, which is manslaughter. So that would cap it at a maximum of 15 years in prison and 15 years of probation. That's the ballpark that I would want her in, not second degree murder, because we go to trial on second degree murder. She's getting potentially life. So you want to avoid that. I would argue for manslaughter and work out some term of years that's acceptable to the next of kin. Now, you mentioned the, the passing out, right? That she, and, and I think it's very possible she may have passed out because she does make a call in the morning to 911, mm -hmm. right, when she wakes up. Um, but when you pass out, the fact that she passed out from alcohol, does, I mean, again, does that play into any sort of a defense here or is that in the same pile with the with the drinking mitigation i think you throw it in also as part of the defense in other words it, it wasn't reckless behavior you would argue it, she was just so already impaired that that it, she wasn't all there so how could she really be held accountable um look don't kill the messenger that's what i would argue but i would want to avoid making that argument um the prosecution would probably bring, bring in their extensive history of violence where they've both been pretty nasty to each other. Um, and, and that might play a role also. It's just so ugly. I think it's ripe for some type of plea bargain. I wouldn't air it out if I'm her. Yeah, I, I think the part that really will be devastating in front of a jury is when she says, that's what you get when you're cheating on me, Oof. right? So not, a good, not a good set of facts. And worse, that she lied to law enforcement initially, tried to paint some type of picture, but for those two videos on her phone, I mean, delete, delete, she might have committed the perfect crime. But they've got those videos, and now she's got criminal culpability. You can't argue it's a mere accident. Right. And, and is she locked into that hide-and-seek story from the 911 call? Well, she said it. She said it. Um, you know, her attorneys can say, well, she was drunk when she said that. Now, upon reflection, here's what really happened. But look, th these are bad facts. You know, you, you put somebody in a suitcase or they go into a suitcase, you're responsible for them, you know, and and ultimately this would not have happened. But for her unzipping that suitcase, the argument on the other side is, look, he did it voluntarily. They are playing a game. They were both impaired. And it is just a tragic accident. You know, what do your jurors think? What do you what is your what is the court of public and think? That's pretty much what jurors may do in a case like this. Yeah. Now. The other thing that she does say, though, is she says, this is like when you choke me. So is there any defense going down that road? Kind of like, the, you know, I'm an abused uh, spouse, not spouse, but abused girlfriend. And, you know, I'm the victim of domestic violence here. And yeah. this is this was my way uh, out of all of that. It cuts both ways. For sure, you'd want to argue that she's a victim of domestic violence if the judge will let it in, because what you're doing is you're saying this wasn't the greatest guy and you're essentially, don't kill the messenger, trying to devalue his life to some extent so the jurors feel a little differently about her. But it cuts the other way. It's like you then intentionally, there's some spite. There is that depraved heart because she, he had done some things to you in the past and now it's payback. It's not as innocent as you're saying. You had anger in your heart and that could support a second-degree murder conviction. 
Yeah, I, I think it could almost go to first degree. Like you could you could argue that there was like she tricked him into getting into that suitcase, was angry Easy, about man. the cheating. Yeah, but those aren't the facts. Easy. I mean, you know what I'm saying? She's got enough to deal with. Those clearly were not the facts. Right. He got into the thing willingly is what the apparently what they're suggesting. You change the facts. And sure. Now you're looking no, at first degree. But fact, willingly. Was, but yeah. but but, you know, in a in a trickery way where she's not. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Second Maybe. degree is life. No, no, though. No. Second degree is, is life in prison. So C could definitely be life. Yes. Serious enough. Yes. Mark Iglar. Speak to Mark.com. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Always.